we felt that we could actually take advantage of the low interest rate of this type of loan and also know that it's not going to be a long-term type of loan. And it was focused on COVID-19, precisely the resources that we needed. And we discussed it extensively. There was an aversion in our country about getting a loan from the IMF because of the history that the IMF has had in imposing adverse conditions on many developing countries around the world. And we took a view that we would not subject ourselves to conditions that would compromise and sacrifice our own sovereignty as a nation. We were quite clear about that. And in fact, I should give credit to officials in our various government departments, particularly Treasury, because in a number of loans or funding that we could have acquired for a number of projects, mega projects, they were the ones who rejected and continued to reject adverse conditions. And we've continued to do precisely that. The other day, Minister of Finance was telling me that the World Bank loan, they were attaching conditions that we could not accept. And we agreed that we would, yes, reject that, and they were still negotiating. So when it comes to conditions that would be adverse and sacrifice our sovereignty, we draw the line and say no. When it comes to loans that would give us the lowest interest charge, we've tended to say we can go for cheap money, cheap money that would help us achieve the objectives that we have, knowing fully well that we are not going to be sucked in or compromise uh, our sovereignty. And it is on that basis that we did, after much discussion in a variety of places, including the governing party, that we did say we will, yes, accept this because of what is our challenges at the moment and what is on offer in terms of the interest charge. I don't believe that the interest charge is so adverse that we will not be able, if you look at the matrix that I spoke to, we should be able to reduce our debt and be able to start showing positivity once our economy begins to recover. And our economy, yes, has been scaling down over a number of years. And much of it has been with the world economic conditions, but much of it has been our own faults, which we are now correcting. We've identified them. We're now embarking on a vigorous process of reforms. But at the same time, we are saying we are not going to abandon the, ta the, the, the path of making sure that we safeguard the interests of our people when it comes to the programs that are going to support their lives. So, Honorable Shibambu, yes, you may have this uh, negative disposition towards uh, this entity called the IMF, but we have said this is an allocation. <laughs> well, the, the, I'm sorry, Mr. President. Please proceed. Well, I was about to say uh, a, a, a young a young child out there is very appreciative of what I'm saying. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. The that supplementary goes to the Honourable Swartz. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honourable President. And I think just your comment, President, about the youngster on the show now is, a, is, is humorous, but at the same time it does indicate we need to be careful of intergenerational debt. And you have correctly alluded to the uh, almost 4 trillion rand debt and the need to borrow funds internationally, uh, which is regrettable, but we appreciate the fact of the 70 billion IMF loan at 1.1% which is very favorable terms. However, it did require commitments in the form of a letter intent from the country, signed by the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Reserve Bank. Honorable President, one needs to understand that to what degree do those commitments 
Are they conditionalities? And Honorable President, the question is what impact will the recent revelations about the COVID-19 corruption, as well as other challenges facing our nation, such as power supply constraints, have on our standing with international investors and international finance institutions, and our compliance with the letter of intent, given that that particular rapid financing instrument was provided to finance COVID-19 expenditure. So obviously there's a great concern from those institutions as to the corruption allegations. When seen against the backdrop of additionally prior to COVID-19, state capture and corruption as we see with the Zonda Commission. And may I just say, President, commend you on the amendment of those regulations for the Zonda Commission. That is, as the NPA has said, a game changer and it does indicate a commitment to fight corruption. So I thank you for that as well, President. Thank you. Thank you, much. Mr. Swart. The Honorable the President. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Swart. When it comes to the letter that has had to be signed by the Minister of Finance and the Central Bank Governor, it is a letter that sets out, uh, obviously, a number of conditions. It is just like when you go to a bank and you go borrow money, they will have certain conditions. And the conditions will range from things like you, 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 you cannot spend much more money than what you earn, you cannot do this and you cannot do that. And of course they will say that. They will say that we hope that you will be able to reduce your debt over time. And it's not an onerous commitment to make because that's what we want to do. Many of the things that are set out in the letter is precisely what we know we have to do. And they would say we would like you to go on with the reforms. It's not like an instruction from them that you shall do this. We say these are things that we are committed to doing. We have a program of our, if you like, our network industries, our rail, our energy, our water, and all that. Those are the network industries that we have to reform. So when they raise it in the letter, it's not like uh, an instruction from them. It's what we want to do, to reduce our debt. And also to live within our means is precisely what we should do, is the prudent things that we should do. There may well be one or two conditions that could raise eyebrows. I'm quite prepared to say that. But it is not so debilitating that you would say no to getting a 1.1% loan. So it's not sacrificing our sovereignty. Uh, we're not uh, you know, selling the, the silver of the country and all that. So yes, we've had to, to, to agree to that. But what is the impact of what we are going through, uh, the corruption, for instance. Uh, yes, of course. I mean, in the letter, they may well have said, we would like to see you fight corruption. It's, it's what we want to do. So it's, a, it's a, if you like, a nice condition. It may sound bad that it is being raised by somebody else, but it's just as good as if you go to a bank and they say, we want you to make sure that you you know, you do this and that, and then you say, okay, you are not going to buy a Rolls Royce. You will agree that we will not buy, I will not buy a Rolls Royce and all that. So in the end, um, in terms of compliance, we intend to comply. We intend to do what is right for ourselves as a country and the people of our country. And they will obviously be looking at the steps we take to curb corruption. Uh, obviously, they don't want to see the wheels falling off the country. They will want to make sure that, indeed, we will fight corruption and we will work within the parameters that are set out in our covenants, in our laws, and everything else. They will want to see that, yes, we are going to upgrade our power facility, that ESCOM will be properly managed, that we will go on with the reforms or with the restructuring in ESCOM and, and all those, those things. They are not things that are so negative that they would cause us 
to believe that uh, they are interfering with our sovereignty. These are things that we will do. So in the end, I would be able to say to you, yes, they have not been sort of uh, di uh, discouraged to go ahead with the, with, the, with the loan because of the corruption. They have noted, of course, as they often do, because they have their representatives here and they watch our economy on a daily basis and they watch all the indices and the indicators like they do with any other country, uh, but they have not been discouraged from going ahead uh, with this. Now, question would be asked. Many people have often said, shouldn't you have looked elsewhere? Shouldn't you have gone to find money in the PIC, uh, in uh, this other body and this other body? And we say, uh, those entities obviously have their own governance structures and to make an allocation of 74 billion rand is not an easy matter. And if we get it as a 1.1% loan, it becomes something that we can work with. So it is for that reason that we have, and we will, on a compliance basis, be able to comply, to meet the compliances that they've set up, because they are not onerous, they are not being imposed on us, these are things that we need to do ourselves and move on and uh, reform South Africa so that we have an economy that can function better. Thank you very much. Thank you.